everyone, welcome back to Game Vine. And my name is Dave, and today on Spice Up Your Life, we're going to be taking a chest here that looks like this and turn it into something that looks a little more like this. Now, this isn't for any specific game, but it might add to the immersion of a pirate game or a globe trotting artifact finder in like a jungle type game. But what are we waiting for? Let me show you how it's done. Okay everyone, so now let me go over all the ingredients that are required in the Spice Up Your Life today. First, let's go over the coverage, uh, the stain and the paints. The stain that I went with is a red mahogany stain because I want it to look as dilapidated as possible, so I'm going to go with a darker stain. Uh, the next thing here is an acrylic gold paint. Uh, you can see on the smaller chest that I have here, yes, I have two different size, sizes, I'll go over that in a minute, I put the acrylic gold paint on the trim. Uh, the next is the black spray paint. This is going to make it look even more grimy, add the dirt onto the actual chest and the end product, so you're going to need that. Uh, the other things that you'll need are these tiny little wood planks. Um, it's, they're just little sticks, and I'll go over why, why we need those later in the how-to portion of the video. The next thing that we'll need are paint brushes, and I like these little sponge paints uh, pads because of the stain here. I really can get in the crevices and work easy with those. And the next piece, the crucial piece, is the chest. Now you can get these at a, any hobby store. Um, they come pre-built, nailed, glued. You don't need to do anything. Basically you just will be altering this and it's going to look really impressive. So those are the ingredients and now let's go over how to put all this together to make this. Oh, this. Oh, and I almost forgot. Sandpaper. You'll need sandpaper. All right, folks, so this is the first step. I've taken this stick here and I've stirred up the stain to make sure it's mixed well. Uh, the pre-mentioned sandpaper has to do its work first. So what you do before you stain is you'll buff out all the edges and every little bit of the chest, even the smooth parts here, to make sure the stain can really get in there. And this will add some wear and tear to the chest as well. So let me do that real fast and then we'll get to the staining. Okay, so now that we've given this chest a light sanding, nothing too much to um, extinguish any of the details. Uh, before I go on, I do want to note that these will be two different chests here. I made this one first. Um, I just want to give people options. This is a, an inch shorter and a inch uh, less in width, um, but it's neither here nor there. I just, you know one and two do different sizes. So now we go on to the second step. And as you can see, this is going to be a little more labor intensive, but I'll try to cram it all together and give you a briefing. Uh, it's worth your time, trust me. So let's get to the staining. What we'll do is we'll just take our brush here and get it into the stain. And as easy as it is just paint the staining on. Make sure to get in every part um, and go ahead and go over the parts that will be painted with gold because you might as well make everything dark and um, it's just going to add to the depth of the actual chest. So you're going to go ahead and just stain this like so and you'll do the next step. So let me fast forward in time to show you what this looks like all stained. Okay, and as you can see, I put blue gloves on. I remember last time I did this, uh, I got the stain all over my hands, and I didn't get, off, get it off for days. So uh, make sure not to make that mistake. So once you have stained the inside, as you can see, and the outside of the chest, you're going to let this sit for about at least one day. And if you have the time, do two days because it's still a little sticky um, in the first day, and it really solidifies the stain after uh, two days. And sometimes you might have to go over with a second coat to get some of the spots that didn't take well or you might have missed, but that is the staining phase. Very simple, I'm not a painter by any means, but 
this allows me to tackle projects that the average Joe might be able to do. So after you let this sit, let uh, after we let this sit, let's go to the next step in the process. Okay, so three days after, um, it's dried pretty much all all the way, but it needs a little wipe down to get some of the excess. Uh, stain. So I just took a paper towel to it and have a roll of paper towels on hand because you're going to need them later. Uh, and so that took away some of the leftover stain and looks pretty good. There was a little bit of the stain on the metal part. You can kind of get it off, but even if you can't, again, that adds to the wear. So the next step, I have the gold acrylic paint out here. I went with this uh, medium sized brush, it's kind of slanted here. And we're just gonna um, take the acrylic paint and put it on the trim here. You don't have to paint uh, the metal part, but if you want to, to make it match, you can go over it with uh, some kind of like varnish or uh, fingernail polish to give it um, a nice coat so it doesn't peel off. Uh, I do want to show the other chest. These two trims are different. This chest, the trim goes all the way around and that's going to matter because of the back part uh, that I'll get to a little later in the video. This one stops in the back so we'll stop painting right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and we're going to fast forward. So paint that nails and all and you might have to give it one or two coats. And there we have the finished product. Well, at least for now. Um, the first coat is on, and as you can see, it continues all the way down and just kind of um, lightly got the sides of the panels. And you don't really have to do much. It's just the, uh, the outside panels here. The trick is, though, after you get the first coat and or the second coat, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need a second coat of this acrylic paint, is when you have it on like that and it, there's... Little, little too much paint to, to get the uh, the texture of like dinged up metal. You just kind of press it uh, against the uh, panel here like this, and it'll get give it little beads and dents. And you'll do it for both coats as well. It'll give it more texture, and uh, that is the best way to simulate a metal material. So we're gonna let this sit for another day or two. Nobody said this was gonna be easy, but it's absolutely worth it. So let's let it sit and then we'll go to the next step. Okay folks, so now we're back. Um, the gold trim is nice and dry and it looks very metallic, which is nice. Um, and this is where, this step here is where we're gonna be taking these little planks here and putting them onto the back of the chest here. Now this is gonna allow the chest not to go all the way back and tip over. In some cases, this seems to be pretty level, but it's not. If you put that, uh, these little stoppers here, it's gonna leave it open and it's gonna give it a nice effect. So to do that, you're gonna have to take these planks here. And remember when I said it mattered uh, with the gold trim on the back of the chest, this one here, I had to paint gold. In this case, we're gonna have to sustain these planks here. And uh, so you're gonna be staining for these planks and you're gonna be gluing them together like this. Um, I forgot the glue in the instructions. I put text there, so I apologize. But the glue that I'm gonna use is not just a standard Elmer's wood glue, which I'm gonna use. I find this, um, this like uh, rubber cement glue at the dollar store. This adhesive is incredibly strong and fast drying. So I know the whole process that we've been doing is very long and like drawn out, but this is gonna be the fastest because the, the drying agent uh, is there. So you're gonna actually be mixing these two um, glues and you're gonna be taking these two glues and mixing them like so. And that's how you're gonna be gluing all the wood together. So the wood planks together and then the wood planks to the actual chest. This is gonna give it a nice strong grip and it's gonna assure that it's gonna stay there when it's propped up and they're not gonna fall off. So what you're gonna do is basically just mix this up. All right, let's do this fast motion. So there you go. It still looks like the wood glue, but I assure you this is uh, this concoction is one of the best things that I've ever come up with. Uh, and I like to use this in many of my projects. So like I said, stain these and then put the glue thinly on there, place them together, let them dry for about, I don't know, an hour or so, and make sure they're already stained. I took the liberty and did that already. And this is what it comes out to look like. So I got 
four planks, two, two of them glued to each other, and this is gonna expand across the whole back of the chest. So one's gonna go right under the hinges here, and another's gonna go right here, not laying down. I'm gonna protrude them out here just to give it a little more of a leverage to stay up. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna glue these together and we're gonna fast forward and I'm gonna show you how it looks. Okay, so I have it propped up like I want it. It's all glued um, so it can hold up the top here. Uh, you wanna race against the clock with this stuff here cause it's pretty fast drying, but it's not too bad. Um, so it, it looks like it's a snug fit. If it's not, if it protrudes at all, just sand it down a little bit, make sure it's really dry. Uh, so that's how you add the prop to the top. Let's go to the next step. Okay, so now it's all dried and the prop works beautifully. You look at it, it stays open very nicely and not even all the way dry. Um, so the next process, let's beat this mother up. This is where we're gonna pit it with like a thumbtack or you can use like a safety pin. Just give it little pits and uh, you can use like a pair of scissors to dent it up on the side here. Um, I'm using a paint can opener. Make sure to do it on the metal, not too hard though because you just want to you don't want to peel away the paint and this is where you can customize your chest so just dent it up this is where the black paint is really going to get into those pits and dents and it's going to show that this chest has been you know in the woods for a long time so do that to your heart's desire and then we're going to go to the next step spray painting okay so spray paint i have relocated to my garage with the door wide open basically outside and i've put on a mask um, one of those paper masks over your face just so I don't breathe in the fumes. Again, you've seen in text in the beginning, you just want to be very cautious when you deal with spray paint. So we have the black spray paint here. Um, we're all, you also have the option of using green spray paint. Uh, it's not necessary. I will be using it just to give it some mold, um, but this is how you can add the grime and dirt to the chest. So what you'll do is just about, uh, what, two feet away or so. Well, you want to test it, yep, and spray it over a corner like that. Do it like that, and let it sit for about, I don't know, five to ten seconds. You don't want to wait too long. Um, this is also a race against the clock, uh, because then it will set. And then you just want to kind of wipe it off. And some places you want to leave it blotched. Uh, this is, again, an another custom part of the job. You can custom... Uh, customize where you want blots of dirt, a lot of dirt, or some dirt. Um, right there, we just got a little bit. Um, so you'll continue to do this, going over different spots. Don't paint the whole thing at once because you're not gonna have enough time to get to the portions you want. But really get the, get the wood part and dust some of the black over all of it because this is gonna darken all the wood. So I'm gonna do that and time lapse it really fast. Okay, so we've got it all dirty. Um, notice how I kept some of the paint on the metal. That's where you can really customize the look. Put some on there. Make sure to get inside too, because it's not gonna look right if it's brand new inside. Um, be careful of the back, especially if these two planks are still drying. Um, be very gingerly when dabbing them. Um, I am gonna add green paint uh, to it the same way, but a little different. Let me show you. Okay, so the green spray paint is nothing special. Um, but what I'm gonna do with this is I'm really gonna just leave it on and I'm gonna adjust it with the, uh, the paper towels. Just test the paint with the paper towels uh, as well. But I'm gonna get it in the metal parts and just kind of have it creep up, creep up around the, uh, the chest. So I'm gonna start in the front here and I'm just gonna kind of, I'm really gonna push it off the wood but kind of leave it on there it you want to have it as if it's growing up onto the chest so anywhere it is kind of want to trail it off itself so and that's going to add a green hue to it uh, make sure to do it inside and out and that will be the spray paint um, i'm going to do that and let this sit for another day or two and that's basically it I will show you the finished product, but whew, that was a long process. Good job sticking with it the whole time, everyone. You have yourself a really cool antique chest. All right, so there we have it. All dried, nice, appealing, dusty, 
piratey. Um, and that's what we have after all that work. So this can spice up such games as Game Rights, The Curse of the Ruby Rhino. This is a kid's game and it provides you with this box. It's the cardboard box, it's the chest, but you can add this bad boy and all the cursed treasure goes in there. Pretty nice, we do it every time we play this game. Or other uh, adult games like like Jamaica here, the pirate game where you can add the chest. The big one that we made is not the uh, greatest fit, but the small one that I made before is a perfect fit. And you put your treasure cards in there, matey. Gar. Libertalia is a good choice. Ditch the bag. Get the chest and keep your booty in there, matey. There you go. That's a more thematic way to grab your booty, right? Or this game, Red Dragon Inn. You can use it as the bank or the innkeeper to house all the gold. Very thematic and neat, huh? The possibilities are endless, so get out there and make your own chest, or stay tuned and try to win this one. Alright, so that was Spice Up Your Life, making a chest for thematic reasons. Uh, let me start by saying we're going to do our very first giveaway of this big chest here uh, on Game Vine, and uh, all you have to do is name my favorite superhero, so I'm pretty sure that's going to be very hard for you to do. And if you have the right answer, just leave it down here in the comments below. I'll enter your name if you're right into a drawing that we're going to be grabbing from in the next Spice Up Your Life video that's going to be associated with this chest here. And uh, we'll reveal the winner of that drawing in the very beginning of the video. And I hope I help somebody out there. And until the next time I see you, have a great rest of your day and all that you play. I'm Dave from Gamevine, out. Spice Up Your Life. <laughs>